Good afternoon, beautiful people. Happy Sunday. Happy first day of the week. My name is Julia Spence and I'm a life certified life coach coming to you live from Vancouver, British Columbia. And this last week, I have been sharing on owning your purpose. And I shared on how your purpose is precious. You are precious and your purpose is precious. I shared on how how our fulfilling our purpose gives our family wings and encourages them to pursue their purpose. And today, I am just going to do a wrap up on what is owning your purpose. And this is from my life, life experience, my life learning and, and working with other individuals. So what is your purpose? Your purpose is your assignment that God has given you. It's a unique purpose. It's unique to you. For example, my cousin is an HR consultant, and there are millions of HR consultants, but no one can do HR consulting the way she can do it because God has given her a unique purpose, a unique identifier. Each of us have an original blueprint, and so when God releases us in the earth, he says, this is your time to show up on the planet. This is your time. You go. I have given you a specific task and when you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart and I will give you that assignment. So let's look and see what he says to the prophet in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 to, I think I'm going to read to about verse 14 and he says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says Jehovah, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you hope in your latter end and you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. You shall seek me and find me with all your heart. So one of the first elements of recognizing that you have a purpose and knowing a purpose is seeking after God, connecting with him because he is the creator of the universe. He's the creator of humanity. And therefore, in order for, for us to know what our purpose is, we have to reconnect with him. So an individual will reach a point in their life where they're like, there's got to be more than this. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, Juanita, Donella, and Deborah, and all of the live viewers. I can only see a few people at a time. So, and those of you that will watch on the broad on the replay. Hey, so we're talking about owning your purpose and what does that look like? So it's the assignment that God has given each and every one of us. Thank you so much for joining. If the broadcast is a blessing, please share it out so that others can be encouraged and pushed in the area to pursue in their purpose. So it begins with this big search. You're sitting at your desk wherever you're working or not working and you're like, there's got to be more to life than this. And so we, we come into that awareness that we were created for something unique and something specific. We may not know yet, but we begin to do the search. So we come into the realization then that, okay, we need God. Why do we need God? Because he is the architect of humanity. He's architect of the world. And so who knows best than the creator of a thing, how it should, should work. And as we shared in Jeremiah 29 from verse 11 to 14, he says, my thoughts toward you are good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. So that's why I point individuals back to the creator of the universe, because anytime we operate in a space and time that we are not flowing and operating in how we were created, abuse is experienced. Anytime an object is not used the way it was designed to be used, abuse will, will occur. So in order for us not to be abused, we need to connect with the creator to understand how we're supposed to work. And I'll, I'll use marriage. For example, a wife has a, a specific way that she needs to function according to God's direction and a husband but many of us are in relationships that are abusive because a wife wives we don't sometimes we don't even know how we're supposed to function because we haven't read the manual we haven't gone back to the creator to ask lord how am i supposed to function right so anytime we do not operate according to the purpose that we're created abuse will occur 
So then we get connected with heaven and we get God's blueprint, his original blueprint for our lives. So we say, okay, Lord, so I've sought you, I've found you, I find out what you want me to do with my life, help me get connected to the resources that are needed. And those resources could be finances, those resources could be a coach such as myself, those resources could be a building to do your business, to operate your business, whatever it is. Once we get connected with the creator, we begin to see that he begins to bring into our sphere of influence the things that are needed. And it's important to follow his directions. It was the week before that I shared about a, a young man by the name of Samson. And Samson had this specific purpose. And Samson's parents were given specific instructions on how Samson should live his life. But Samson chose to live his life contrary to those specific instructions and his demise was his end was not was not very um what's the word i'm looking for his end was not very good yes he did fulfill the purpose that god created him that was to destroy a group of people who were evil and wicked and mean but at the end of the day he he could have gotten god's perfect will but he chose god's permissive will so that's why we focus on getting in with God and, and understanding exactly how we're supposed to, to function. So then after we get his direction and we access the, the resources that he has avail, available to us, we go through the process. There is a process, right? There is a process. Thanks for, for joining Cousin Dwayne. There is a process, right? No one becomes an expert overnight. So there is a process that we all must go through in order to prepare us for where God needs us to be. So there's a training process. There's a pruning process. But many of us miss out on the greatness that God has in us to manifest because we don't want to do things God's way. And there's a story, another story of a young man whose name is Joseph. And Joseph, God gave Joseph, Joseph this incredible dream. And when Joseph shared the dream. People laughed at him. His family laughed at him, mocked him. His brothers hated him because the dream was so audacious. You know that your dream is a God dream when it's audacious. And when you look around you and there's no evidence of this thing ever coming to pass, you know that it's a God dream because then we have to rely on him for it to come to pass. So anyhow, this young man, Joseph, goes through this process where he's thrown into the pit by his brothers. He's thrown into prison because his employer's wife blamed him of trying to seduce her, which was a lie. He goes into the prison. God has, has him use his gift of dream interpretation to help the baker and the cup maker who were working in the palace. Anyhow, one day the king had a dream. Nobody could interpret it. And I think it was the baker, no, the, the cup maker, whoever, who, whoever it was, the cup bearer, whoever it was, one of them remembered, hey, there's this guy in prison that knows how to interpret dreams. And the scripture tells us that our gift will make room for us and take us before great men. So the lesson in that is go through the process. Keep doing what you're doing. Even though people do not honor what you're doing, God is going to allow you to come before an individual or individuals that can cause what he has deposited in you to come to pass. So long and short of the story is Joseph became the prince of Egypt, the prime minister of Egypt. He went through the pruning process. It was painful when you read the story in Genesis. He had a really tough time. But guess what? He stuck to honoring God. He could have slept with his the wife of his uh, employer. But he decided, if I do that, I'm going to dishonor God. So along the way, there are going to be things set up to cause us to turn. I, I spoke about land, landfill, and legacy where it talks about parents. And some of us have generational attachments that will come along the way that will want to prevent us from pursuing that thing that God has given us. But God is looking for people that will say, I will stand up for my generation and for my family and for future generations. And I will honor God so that I will leave a legacy of fulfilling the purpose that God has placed in our lives. So Joseph went ahead and he became the prince of Egypt. And not only did he do that, the nation where his brothers were living, the area, there was a famine in the land. And God used Joseph then to fulfill his purpose and save his brother's life. So there are people in your sphere of influence who may mock you along the way, who may betray you, who may do all kinds of things towards you. But 
God will put you in a position to help those same people. And just like Joseph said to his brothers, what you meant for evil, God turned around for good. So Joseph had to go through that forgiveness, unforgiveness battle. Also, that some of us will have to go through when the time comes and God says, you know what, Julia, that person may have betrayed you, but I want you to go help them. And we're going to have to humble ourselves so that we can help other people. Thanks for joining, Cousin Tanya. Happy birthday to you. Hope you're having a fantastic birthday. So we manifest the promise of God. We go through the process, the pruning process, and we manifest the promise of God. But guess what? We still need to stay connected to God. Because what happens is sometimes when we come, as we used to say in the Caribbean, I don't know if we say, still say it, that when you become big up, you know, you forget God. We prayed about all these things and God caused us to open this business or cause us to get married, whatever it is that he caused you to accomplish that was in your purpose. And then we forget about him, right? But we need to stay connected. And then the final step in owning your purpose is then, as Wilma J. Williams says, God wants us to be king makers. So we discover what it is that God needs us to do. We begin to search for how we can accomplish it with the leading of God's Holy Spirit. Then we, we get the direction, we manifest God's glory. The promise is manifesting God's glory. We stay connected with God and we begin. That's okay because you can always watch the replay. You, you, you then begin to help other individuals become who God says they are in that particular area. So the Lord gave me a dream many, many years ago where me and about three or four other women were standing over a well and we were pulling women out of this well. And that was an indication to me that God wants me to learn from the experiences that I've had in life and he will send individuals that will work long, alongside with me and he will also send individuals my way that need the gift that he has deposited in me. So I want to challenge you today. What? has God deposited in you that he needs you to go through the process to manifest his glory in the earth. As I began the broadcast saying, owning your purpose is owning the assignment for which God has placed you on the earth to show people who he is. It is in connecting with the creator that we then begin to understand why we were created. The closer we get to him, the more we begin to understand what our assignment on the planet is, and then we can begin to manifest that. But we don't take the glory. We don't operate in pride. We humble ourselves because God wants to use us to draw people back to him because that's why Christ came. Christ fulfilled his purpose at the age of 30. He went into ministry and he died so that we, he could get the keys back from Satan and the keys are now given to us who believe in God so that we can get those keys and manifest God's glory. So what keys he want to give you? Does he want to teach you how to be an entrepreneur? Does he want to teach you how to be a wife that is exemplary, that can help other wives become godly wives? Does he want to teach you how to be a manager uh, uh, an, uh, an individual who helps people in, in the entertainment area, you know, does he want you to be a principal and teach other teachers how to use the different learning styles to help every child in the classroom? What has God created you to do? Does he want you to become prime minister just as Joseph became prime minister? So my challenge to us today is to connect with the creator because that's the only way you're going to live your true assignment. He has a specific blueprint for each of us and he wants each of us to own our purpose. So I trust this broadcast has been a blessing to you. Again, my name is Julia Spence. I'm a certified life coach coming to you live from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And it is my passion to work with individuals who are stuck in their purpose, in any area of their lives, and they want to move forward and they need an action plan, that's why I'm here. I also work with individuals recognizing where their family foundations are out of sorts. 
and in need of repair so that they can work in getting their family foundations together. And what is your family foundation? Your family foundation is that foundation which your life was built on. What did you see growing up? Was it dysfunctional or was it functional? And we're looking at both aspects of our family foundation so that we can build on that which is functional and we can recognize where that that is dysfunctional is hindering us from fulfilling our purpose from from living a life that the life of abundance that God created for us and when we speak about abundance we're not just speaking about finances we're speaking about good emotion emotional health we're speaking about financial order, financial freedom. We're speaking about all the elements of an individual's life. So as a certified life coach, that's what I do. I work with you to help you get through the process of understanding why you were created, how do you go about making the connections to fulfilling your purpose and seeing the connection between your family foundations, whether it's hindering you or it's an asset. And we work through those processes and you fulfill your purpose and then you leave a legacy that the other people in your generations in the future can continue the process and leave a healthy, strong family foundation. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can private message me. I am currently working on getting my website up and getting the business Um. What am I saying? <laughs> Get in the business registered and I will have some contact details for you guys coming up. Another thing also, I'm working on a book which will be launched in September. So stay tuned for more information where you guys can get the book. I know sometimes you're not able to watch the live broadcast and then you have the book in hand and you can read it at your leisure. So thank you guys for your support, for your love, for joining me on this Sunday afternoon. And remember... God is speaking to you because you're watching this broadcast because he's saying it's time to own your purpose. That's why you're so you're experiencing discomfort, especially in the area of career or marriage or wherever. And you're desiring change. God is making a way for change to come into your life in a positive way. So bless you guys. Thank you for watching the broadcast. And I will see you sometime this week. Take care. Bye now.